Hello to everyone. In this talk, I'm going to uh, describe our paper titled Near Optimal No Regret Learning for Correlated Equilibria in Multiplayer General Sum Games. So let me first give uh, a brief sketch uh, or an overview for the talk. First of all, I will describe the basic motivation. Then I will formally introduce the problem as well as uh, some background necessary for uh, some of the results I'm going to describe. Then we're going to discuss some of the prior literature on this uh, in this line of work. And finally, we're going to dive into our own uh, our own results. OK, so first of all, in terms of uh, motivation, uh, learning dynamics are central uh, for a number of different applications. First of all, uh, from an economic standpoint, there is uh, extensive empirical evidence that uh, agents often use some form of non regret learning to uh, adapt their behavior in complex uh, strategic environments. Uh, in particular, this has been extensively uh, observed in several uh, auction settings. Furthermore, learning dynamics are uh, very simple and are very efficient in terms of the per iteration complexity. And as such, they tend to uh, scale remarkably well in very large scale. Uh, indeed, uh, they have uh, very minimal memory requirements, especially compared to other traditional approaches for computing equilibrium games, which mostly revolve around uh, linear programming techniques. And for those reasons, uh, learning dynamics in games have been uh, very popular and have really enjoyed uh, remarkable uh, success in practical applications. Okay, so having uh, briefly uh, described some motivation, let me uh, give you some very uh, basic uh, background on games. So for the rest of the talk, we're going to focus on multiplayer games, and we're going to represent them uh, using the normal form. So here we have a set of players, which we're going to index uh, from 1 to n using natural numbers. And every player has a finite and non-empty set of actions. For example, it could be rock, papers, and scissors. Uh, furthermore, there is a utility function, uh, one for each player, which maps any possible action profile to some real number, which represents the utility of the player under that given profile. And we can assume without any loss that these, uh, these utilities are normalized. And finally, when we talk about the strategy, we're going to simply mean a distribution over the, uh, the set of available actions. So in this setting, the problem of non-regret learning in games is defined as follows. At every iteration t, every player has to select a strategy, that is, a probability distribution over the set of actions. Then the player receives uh, some feedback from the environment. Uh, and in particular, in the full uh, information model where we're going to consider throughout this talk, the player receives a utility vector, which is defined as follows. We fix the strategy of every other player besides player i in the previous round. And then every coordinate of the utility vector is simply the expected utility the player would have obtained by playing the corresponding action. Now, from a complexity theoretic standpoint, um, uh, we can efficiently uh, simulate this oracle in virtually all known uh, succinctly representable games. So this is, in fact, the, essentially the property that uh, Papa Dimitriou and Ralph Garden referred to as the polynomial expectation property. And uh, furthermore, let me point out that the results we're going to describe in this paper cannot be extended in the weaker uh, bounded uh, feedback model. So besides uh, this feedback, there is no other information available to the player. In particular, all of the results we're going to describe uh, hold even if players have no uh, knowledge about the game initially. Uh, and furthermore, uh, in this setting, there is no communication. We do not allow any communication between the players, and there is no centralized authority uh, dictating or recommending uh, behavior. So this, uh, this model satisfies certain important desiderata. First of all, the dynamics that uh, are going to be used are uncoupled in the sense of hard and muscle level, which simply means that players, uh, when they make the decisions, are completely agnostic to the utilities observed by the other players. Uh, first, furthermore, they are also strongly uncoupled, uh, which simply means that players are initially agnostic even to their own utilities. 
Now, uh, the this property of strong uncoupledness is crucial for games such as zero sum, where if every player uh, knows the payoff matrix, then players could simply compute locally minimax equilibria, and the problem would be trivial from a distributed standpoint. Now, the canonical uh, measure of performance in this setting, and more broadly in online learning, is the notion of external regret. So here we're comparing the performance of the learning agent compared to the performance the agent would have obtained by playing the optimal fixed action in hindsight. And, you know, at the very least, we want that the uh, cumulative regret grows uh, sublinearly with T, uh, which in turn would imply that the average uh, regret is vanishing. Now, the importance of no regret learning um, is that there are fundamental connections with uh, game theoretic equilibrium concepts. Uh, first of all, uh, if every player is using a no external regret algorithm in the sense that the external regret is vanishing, uh, then the empirical uh, frequency of play uh, will converge to the set of coarse correlate equilibria. Now, coarse correlate equilibria is an important solution concept in game theory, uh, which is a generalization of Nash equilibria. And uh, in multiplayer and general sum games, it is uh, common to consider um, equilibrium concepts which are more uh, general or more permissive than Nash equilibria, since the latter are known to be, uh, are known rather to believe to be computationally intractable. Uh, and in fact, within this distributed uh, setting we are operating in, uh, Nash equilibria are un unconditionally hard. So I'm not going to formally describe CCE. But let me briefly uh, describe intuition. So CCEs are usually modeled using a mediator or a trusted third party, uh, which acts uh, as follows. So there is a publicly known correlate distribution that is a distribution over action profiles. Then the mediator samples from that correlate distribution and privately recommends uh, actions to every uh, player based on the sample uh, joint action profile. And uh, roughly speaking, in a CCE, no player has an incentive to deviate from the recommendation. Uh, although here I'm hiding an important part of the definition, I'm going to, uh, to explain later when I describe the difference between coarse correlated and correlated equilibria. And it is also worth noting that uh, in certain games, uh, such as two players or some games, uh, CCEs are known to collapse in a certain, uh, in a certain sense to minimize equilibria. So for those games, uh, no regret learning will converge uh, to minimax equilibria. Now, uh, here is the central, uh, the central question. It is well known that there are broad families of no regret algorithms, such as mirror descent, which have a square root of t regret. And in turn, uh, that would imply convergence to a CC with a rate of one over square root of t. Now, uh, while the square root of t guarantee is known to be uh, unimprovable in full adversarial environments. Uh, in the problem of knowing that learning in games, uh, the player is not really facing adversarial utilities. Instead, every player is competing against other potentially learning agents who, who uh, themselves could be using some form of a regularized, regularized learning algorithm. Um, as a result, um, the sequence of utilities observed by its player has much more structure. So it is uh, natural to ask whether it's possible to obtain uh, improved guarantees in those settings. Okay, so let me uh, now describe some of the prior literature uh, on this topic. Uh, the previous question was first formulated and addressed uh, about 10 years ago, where it was shown that uh, uh, it's possible to obtain log t uh, regret in zero sum games, uh, which uh, corresponds to an exponential improvement over the guarantees uh, one can hope to get using uh, traditional uh, guarantees within the no regret framework. Furthermore, uh, that work also established a nearly matching uh, lower bound on the regret. The main caveat of that work was that uh, the dynamics uh, were fairly complicated and that was addressed uh, a couple of years later where it was shown that analogous uh, performance guarantees can be obtained using uh, a very simple variant of mirror descent uh, namely optimistic uh, mirror descent but uh, still uh, those works uh, only operate within zero-sum games 
And finally, the first results in general multiplayer games well, were obtained by Sir Ganes et al. Uh, and from an algorithmic standpoint, uh, the idea is, uh, is very simple. Uh, in particular, um, the authors considered a very simple variant of follow the regularized leader, which uh, again incorporates optimism, uh, which is uh, some form of a recency bias. To be more precise, uh, if you uh, recognize the FTRL uh, update rule, the only difference is that the utility uh, the player ob observed in the last round is now count counted twice. Furthermore, in this update rule, um, eta here represents uh, the learning rate, and r of x is a, a one strongly convex uh, regularizer with respect to some norm. And to give you an idea of how the analysis works, um, let me first point out um, the RVU band. So this is a property crystallized by Serganis et al. And let me compare this uh, regret bound, which applies for optimistic variants, uh, with the traditional uh, regret guarantees. So the main difference here is that the middle term grows based on the variation of the utilities. So as, as a result, if the utilities uh, vary slowly over time, uh, then it is possible to obtain substantial improvements in the regret guarantees. And indeed, let me explain how the argument of Sirganis et al. works. The first observation is that if a player is using some regularized learning algorithm, such as optimistic FTRL, then we have a property that I'm going to refer to as first order stability. So two successive strategies are close to each other. As a result, if all players in the game are using regularized learning algorithms, then the utilities observed by each player will also be first order stable. And as a result, uh, plugging this new bound into the RVU bound we saw in the previous slide, we get a regret bound that, that is roughly 1 over eta plus um, eta cube uh, times t. Uh, subsequently, if we now optimize over the learning rate, we obtained an improved regret guarantee of the form of t to the 1 over 4. So this is still a substantial improvement from the regrets, uh, from the, the bounds we obtained in the adversarial regime. But uh, nonetheless, we're still far from the guarantees we obtained in zero-sum games. And uh, let me point out that here I use the bigger notation to hide parameters that uh, depend on the actual game. For just for simplicity in the exposition. So that result was the best known um, for quite some time until last year, where it was finally shown how to obtain near optimal uh, regret in general games. And uh, one of the big uh, new ideas uh, is a refined uh, notion of stability that we're going to refer to as higher order stability. And here the um, the observation is, is, um, is the following. What if there is more structure in the observed uh, utilities that we can uh, leverage to obtain improved regret guarantees? To formalize this, the authors um, considered the eight order uh, discrete differences uh, of a sequence. So the first order uh, discrete difference is what we were using uh, all along in the previous argument to obtain improved guarantees. Uh, now, the second order discrete difference is, is defined recursively uh, using the, uh, the first order, as I illustrate uh, here in this slide, and the third order um, similarly. So this type of patterns can be understood uh, using the binomial theorem. And uh, you can think of them as some uh, higher order uh, derivatives of the sequence. Now, the central question is whether there are dynamics for which we can actually get uh, guarantees in terms of the higher order stability. Indeed, uh, the authors considered uh, an optimistic variant of multiplicative weights update, which can be thought of as an instance of optimistic FTRL, the algorithm we actually saw earlier, uh, instantiated with an entropic regularization. So this gives this update rule, which is very much similar to multiplicative weights, uh, only that it now has this uh, momentum term. And the big theorem is that uh, for a sufficiently small learning rate, the eight order discrete differences decay exponentially as we increase the order. And in an oversimplistic way, um, 
using uh, higher order stability uh, combined with uh, RVU type bounds, one can immediately ob obtain uh, substantial improvements. Uh, although there are other parts uh, of the argument uh, that we're not going to cover uh, throughout this talk. Throughout this talk, we're mostly going to focus on uh, higher order stability. So uh, let's now dive into this, the main uh, focus of this talk, which is on swap regret. Uh, swap regret can be understood uh, using the abstraction of fire regret. Fire regret um, uh, is defined based on a set of transformations phi, um, which leads to the following uh, notion of regret. Now the performance of the learning agent is compared to the performance the agent would have obtained by transforming every uh, every strategy from uh, a transformation from uh, the set of transformations phi. Um, so in particular, observe here that um, phi regret trivially captures external regret when the set of transformations only uh, includes constant transformations. But phi regret in general is much more powerful. So in particular for swap regret, that set includes all possible uh, linear transformations. So let me make some uh, comments about swap regret. First of all, swap regret uh, trivially upper bounds, external regret. So a bound for, uh, uh, for swap regret automatically uh, gives a bound for external regret. Uh, furthermore, from a game theoretic standpoint, the importance of swap regret is that um, if all players are using uh, learning algorithms with vanishing swap regret, then the empirical frequency of play will converge to the set of cor correlate equilibria. Correlate equilibria is a stronger solution concept than coarse correlate equilibria, as I'm going to explain in the next slide. Uh, but before we go there, uh, let me also point out that um, if you use uh, traditional uh, no external regret dynamics, uh, it's likely that uh, you're not going to get a meaningful bound for swap regret. So it's possible to have a uh, linear swap regret. So let me uh, briefly comment on the difference between correlated and coarse correlated equilibrium. Uh, coarse correlated equilibrium is a, is a much weaker solution concept. And in some games, it can really induce very rational behavior. Um, so for example, if you use an external regret minimizer to decide how to invest in stocks, it's possible that uh, when you look back at your decisions, you realize that every time you bought uh, from Apple, it would have been better to actually buy from Microsoft. So this type of uh, regret that is not really captured uh, in the definition of external regret. Uh, going back to the, um, to the model of the mediator, the difference is rather subtle. Namely, in a correlated equilibrium, the agent gets to decide whether to follow the recommendation only after seeing the recommendation. As a result, the set of uh, deviations is uh, the agent can consider is much richer compared to cost correlated equilibria. And indeed, uh, swap regret, which is associated with correlated equilibria, uh, incorporates uh, a richer uh, space uh, of regret, a richer space of deviations. Um, compared uh, to external regret. So in this context, the central question we're going to consider for the rest of the talk is whether we can obtain near optimal swap regret guarantees in general games. But before we address this question, let's first understand the adversarial regime. Then it is well understood that there are some uh, generic reductions um, from swap to external regret. In particular, for normal from games, we're going to uh, focus uh, on two basic constructions. One is due to uh, Blam and Mansur, and the other is due to Stoltz and Lukosi. And both of these constructions can be understood using a subsequent, uh, more general construction. Now, the idea is that we're still using an external regret minimizer, but now we are operating over the set of transformations. And to be more concrete, in the context of normal from games, uh, that simply means that now we are optimizing over the space of stochastic matrices. In particular, in the construction of, uh, for example, Blam and Mansur, that means that now we have to maintain a separate uh, regret minimizer for the simplex for every row of the stochastic matrix. And at the end of the day, we have to somehow aggregate all over, over all of those uh, regret minimizers. And the way to do, to do this is to simply output the stationary distribution 
of the induced uh, Markov chain supported uh, over the, the stochastic matrix. So um, since there is this uh, generic deduction, uh, is it true that uh, we can automatically transfer the guarantees for external regret for, to swap regret? Uh, unfortunately, that's not quite the case. Uh, the dynamics uh, now are much more involved. Uh, first of all, uh, we are now operating over a much uh, more involved combinatorial space. But perhaps more importantly, there is this fixed point operation, uh, namely this uh, stationary distribution of the Markov chain, which uh, substantially complicates the analysis. And let me be a bit more concrete about this last point. Um, in particular, let me uh, point out some of the insights of uh, Chen and Peng, who made the first progress on this problem. In particular, they actually observed that even first order stability does not come for free uh, when it comes to no swap regret learning dynamics. In particular, the main observation is that even if the uh, the transition probabilities change slowly, which will be the case if we use a regular, regularized learning algorithm to update the stochastic matrix, matrices, um, the stationary distribution may still uh, change very rapidly. So here I give uh, an example that was taken from the paper of Chen and Peng, where uh, as long as epsilon epsilon prime are very close to zero, and epsilon prime is much smaller than epsilon, then a very small additive perturbation in the Markov chain can cause uh, a substantial, um, uh, can really change substantially the stationary distribution of the Markov chain. So to address, um, to address this, uh, one of the main observations of Chen and Peng was to use a refined notion of stability that we're going to refer to as multiplicative stability. So this simply means that uh, if you take two successive iterates, the ratio of every two coordinates is close to one. So that type of refined stability guarantees is in fact uh, guaranteed by multiplicative weights and optimistic variance thereof. And really the big observation here, which is something that has been uh, documented in the literature, is that as long as the transition probabilities uh, are multiplicatively stable, that suffices to establish that the stationary distribution uh, will also satisfy the condition of first order stability. Using this observation, Chen and Peng were able to obtain uh, T to the 1 over 4 swap regret guarantees, uh, extending uh, the guarantees of Sirganis et al. we saw earlier in this talk. Nevertheless, this is still far uh, from what we saw earlier, the near optimal guarantees for external regret. And the main contribution of our work is to obtain exponential improvements over those guarantees, uh, obtaining near optimal swap regret. In particular, um, we analyze, uh, first of all, the algorithm of Stolzer and Lukosi, uh, instantiated using optimistic multiplicative weights. One of our main results is that uh, this uh, algorithm will actually be not only first order stable, but higher order stable. Uh, leading to the central theorem uh, illustrated in this slide, implying near optimal uh, swap regret uh, in general games. Furthermore, using different techniques, uh, we were also able to show that the algorithm of Blum and Mansur, again instantiated using uh, optimistic multiplicative weights, uh, is again higher order stable, uh, which in particular uh, implies uh, near, opt near optimal uh, swap regret. So the main theorem is uh, summarized uh, again in this slide. So let me first describe uh, briefly our technique uh, for establishing higher order stability for, uh, for the algorithm of Stolz and Lukosi. So let uh, Q uh, denote the, st the stochastic matrix of the construction I, uh, I, I, I highlighted previously. The main uh, one of the main tools of the analysis is the Markov change theorem which provides a uh, combinatorial and cl closed form solution for the stationary distribution of the, uh, of the Markov chain. In particular, the, every uh, coordinate of the stationary distribution can be expressed as a summation over all directed trees rooted at node uh, associated with, uh, with that action. And then every term in the summation is simply a product uh, over the entries of the stochastic matrix, which correspond to the edges of the tree. So the notion of directed tree will not be very crucial uh, for the 
For the argument I'm going to sketch, but nonetheless here I illustrate uh, all of the directed trees supported on four nodes and uh, rooted uh, at node one. Uh, an important observation for the argument is that as long as the every individual entry of the stochastic matrix is updated using optimistic multiplicative weights, then the entire term, the entire product, uh, can itself be uh, thought of as being updated using optimistic multiplicative weights. And from this uh, simple observation, uh, we, uh, we derive the following lifting trick. Uh, we construct a new regret, a new construction for minimizing swap regret, which uses a uh, regret minimizer that now operates over the space of all directed trees. So this is, now an this is now operating over an exponentially large space. But the advantage of this, uh, of this new construction is that it completely bypasses this uh, fixed point operation that caused uh, a lot of uh, technical issues in the analysis. Um, instead, uh, using this uh, fictitious regret minimizer, the stationary distribution is now uh, can be thought of as a very well behaved linear transformation uh, of the output of this fictitious regret minimizer. And one of the big uh, points of this construction is that we can still simulate this uh, regret minimizer over the space of all directed trees using the construction of Stodge and Gaussian. Indeed, uh, we uh, develop the following uh, argument. Uh, we basically construct a fictitious normal form game, which is now uh, played over an exponentially large action space. In this fictitious normal form game, Every player is using optimistic multiplicative weights. So as a result, we can automatically inherit higher order stability by virtue of uh, the results I described earlier. Uh, furthermore, uh, what is crucial for our argument is that the analysis, the regret analysis, has to be performed on the low dimensional space. This is crucial to obtain near optimal dependencies on the, on the size of the game. And to do this, one has to establish that higher order stability in the large space uh, automatically implies um, higher order stability in the low dimensional space, in the space of the stochastic matrices. And with that, let me proceed um, to our analysis for the algorithm of Blum and Mansur. Here, our approach is quite different. Um, and the reason is that the, this construction is much more involved, uh, in particular, it now maintains an independent external regret minimizer for each uh, row of the stochastic matrix. Uh, for this reason, it is unclear whether the technique I previously described can be actually used to analyze, um, to analyze this construction. Instead, our approach for the analysis is much more direct and proceeds as follows. Uh, we consider the Taylor series of a function that appropriately maps ergodic matrices to their stationary distributions. In particular, that mapping is uh, crucially uh, defined based on the logarithm of the transition probabilities. And one of the cracks of the analysis is to, uh, to bound uh, or to characterize the decay of the coefficients of the Taylor series. In particular, um, it, uh, it is shown that uh, such type of bounds automatically uh, establish uh, higher order stability. So this is a much more direct approach um, and it's a, it's a much more general approach um, than compared to, uh, to our approach for analyzing Stolz and Lukosi. Uh, and with that, let me conclude with some uh, open questions uh, related to, to our results. First of all, the analysis um, we described for the algorithm of Stolz and Lukosi is not quite uh, black box. Um, indeed, uh, it will be very interesting to obtain a new fine grained re generic reduction from swap uh, regret to external regret that would automatically transfer guarantees uh, from external regret uh, in the setting of no regret learning in games when all players are using uh, those dynamics. Uh, it would be great if we can automatically uh, preserve such guarantees to swap regret. Furthermore, all of the guarantees that are known uh, apply to dynamics uh, similar to optimistic multiplicative weights. Now, obtaining uh, 
such improvements beyond uh, such uh, dynamics is still an important question. And finally, although um, we established uh, near optimality um, in terms of the dependence on T, the number of iterations, um, there is still uh, work to be done to establish um, uh, matching lower bounds in terms of the other uh, dependencies um, on the on the size uh, on the size of the game.